Okay, section 7.2 uh, introduces us to a category of integration techniques all having to do with trig. Uh, so let's take a look at a couple examples. And there's some trig integrals we already know how to handle. Um, so let's say if we just had something like integration of, let's say, sine to the fourth of x times cosine of x dx. That we can already handle with u substitution. All right, uh, we can say u is sine of x, du is cosine of x dx. And when we make the substitutions here, it works out pretty slick. We just get u to the fourth du, which is easy to integrate, and we back substitute uh, the u, and we're done. Um, but what if the original problem was slightly different? <laughs> Uh, what if the original problem, no, I do not. Um, what if the original problem was more like sine to the fourth cosine squared? Uh, or what if that bit just wasn't there at all? Uh, both of those kind of mess up our U substitution. So let's take a look at a few techniques. And these techniques really aren't anything new as far as calculus goes. Uh, really, they're just based on the fact that there's so many trig substitutions. And you know, because trig is circular, everything can be rewritten in a different way. Uh, so let's look at uh, this as our first example. This is pretty similar to what we started with, but no cosine. Right. So just sine to the fifth. And if that cosine was there, we'd be great for u substitution. Without that, we're stuck on u substitution. So there's a strategy here, and I'm just going to go ahead and jump to the punchline. Um, this is the strategy, the recommendation, uh, when you have an odd power or if you have an even power of a trig function. So for the odd powers, the suggestion is to split one function off and then use the good old, everybody loves it, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, the Pythagorean identity. Uh, so let's see how that works out. So suggested splitting one function off. So we're just gonna rewrite sine to the fifth as sine to the fourth times another sine. And you're like, great, how does that help? Uh, and it helps only in the sense that now we're supposed to be able to use the Pythagorean identity. So let me make one more little algebra replacement here and just say that sine of the fourth is sine squared squared. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is, of course, Pythagorean identity is based on sine squared. So let me rewrite the Pythagorean identity just slightly here and say that sine squared of x is one minus cosine squared of x. So I can rewrite this integral one more time and say I've got one minus cosine squared of x squared times sine x dx. And this might not look like it, but we're actually in good shape now. And the reason we're in good shape now is now we can do a u substitution. Uh, we can say, hey, now I've got cosine and sine. That's what I like for u substitution. So let's make u cosine of x, which makes du negative sine of x dx, or to really be formal about the form we want, that would be a negative du equals sine of x dx. Okay, so let's make our substitutions. Um, our integral looks like 1 minus u squared squared, and then this bit, sine x dx, 
is the same thing as du and negative one. So I'll just move the negative all the way out front here. That's just a constant multiplier. And I'm ready to, well, actually I'm not quite ready to integrate. I need to multiply this out. So this is one minus two u squared plus uh, u to the fourth du. Okay, but now I'm ready to integrate. Uh, so let's do the integral. There's a lot of a uh, lot of plugging and chugging still to do here, but the hard part is done. So let's see, I need to not lose that negative sign out there. And integrate uh, u minus two thirds u cubed plus one fifth u to the fifth. I'm um, not forgetting a plus c on the end, and also, of course, forgetting that not forgetting that u is actually cosine. Uh, so let's see, we've got negative cosine of x minus two thirds um, cosine cubed of x plus one fifth cosine fifth of x. Still got that plus c on there. Uh, the minus sign really should be distributed. Um, so I could distribute that there and there and there. Uh, so final answer is negative cosine x plus two thirds cosine cubed x minus one fifth cosine to the fifth x plus c. Um, okay, so that's a start. That's at least uh, doing it with uh, with an odd power. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at maybe an even powered example as well. Um, so let's just try, uh, let's see, let's do an even power. Let's just do something like cosine the fourth. Um, if you uh, use the Pythagorean identity, it turns out not to work super well. And if you try it yourself, you'll see why I'm not going to go down that rabbit trail. Uh, but let's try the even powers recommendation, which is just to use these half angle identities. So if you don't remember these from trig, this is a great time to refresh yourself on these. Uh, these turn out to be calculus lifelines, these two right here. We're going to use them again and again. Uh, because integrating sine squared, not fun. Integrating cosine 2x, fun. Easy. Uh, we know how to do that. It's just a little tiny u substitution with the 2x. But <clears throat> Okay, uh, so let's see how that goes for us. Uh, cosine to the fourth, uh, of course, can be re rewritten as cosine squared squared. And cosine squared, we can now rewrite that using one of these half angles. Uh, so now we have uh, one plus cosine of two X all over two squared dx. And again, this doesn't immediately look a whole lot better, but let's keep working with it. Um, the nice thing about this section is they always have a recommendation for how to do it. The not so nice thing is there's a lot of crunching to actually work it out, but, but I'd rather crunch than like be lost. So it's nice that they have the technique for you. Okay, so let me square this fraction. Squaring the bottom is easy. Uh, squaring the top takes a little bit of work. That's a foil, actually. Right? So squaring the top is a 1 plus cosine 2x squared. So you get to do first outer inner last. Uh, so that's 1. And then we get 2 cosines of 2x. And we get a cosine squared of 2x. 
dx. Uh, one small technique that I'm going to use right away is just the fact that the 4 is a constant multiple. So I'm going to pull that out front and say I've really just got three terms in here that I'm trying to integrate. Let's see if I can erase that line. Got three terms in there I'm trying to integrate. And two of them are already pretty easy. Um, matter of fact, let me go ahead and do the integral on two of them. Uh, so integrating one uh, is easy. That's x. Integrating cosine of 2x, that does require a tiny little u substitution there. So integrating that one, you need u is 2x, du is 2 dx. Um, but then you get cosine of u and the 2 and the dx make the du. Um, I'm going to skip a couple steps right here, but uh, you should work it out yourself and convince yourself that this one integrates uh, to sine of 2x. Maybe the easiest way to convince yourself is just to take the derivative of sine of 2x. Uh, the derivative of sine of 2x would be 2 cosine 2x. So that's the right antiderivative. Okay, so we're good on two out of the three parts. Um, the last part, so let's see, I'm going to close those parentheses off right now and say I still have to work out I still have to work out that integral. And guess what? It's already circled, I'll circle it again. Uh, we know how to handle a cosine squared. So this last bit needs this half angle identity again. Yeah. Just when you thought the fun was over. We get to do it again. Uh, so I'm going to rewrite cosine squared. Um, and notice the, the formula just says cosine squared of x. And then the angle gets doubled in here. We have 2x in here already. The formula still works. It's just going to double the angle still. So this turns into 1 plus cosine of twice the angle. So it becomes cosine of 4x all over 2 dx. Uh, so I'm going to uh, pull this 2 out. So I'm actually looking at 1 8th integral 1 plus cosine of 4x dx. And this is two terms to integrate. The 1 is easy to integrate. The cosine of 4x takes a little u substitution, but you might be starting to get to the point where you can skip the u substitution and just say, hey, if I took the derivative of sine of 4x, I would get cosine of 4x with a 4 out front. So that 1 fourth is what you'll get when you do the u substitution. And finally, we are not going to forget Dun, da, da, da. plus c on the end of all that. Uh, so my integral here is like in three parts, or two or three parts, but um, the, my final answer was this part, and I can distribute that one-fourth, plus these two parts, and I can distribute the one-eighth as well. One-eighth x, and this actually becomes one-thirty-second sine of 4x. Okay, so you can see there's a lot of trig crunching, but really it just comes down to, hey, if you see one of these even powers of sine, rewrite it with a half angle. Uh, if you've got odd power, that's actually a lot easier because you can just turn it into a u substitution with the Pythagorean identity. 
Um, there's more to come, believe it or not. There's more fun to be had. So in the next video, we'll look at a couple more sort of trig manipulation problems.